Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Camouflage of the World, the series where we take a look at many camouflage patterns from countries all around the world for basic recognition purposes, a brief little history of the pattern, and just a general appreciation of different countries' takes on camouflage for many different environments. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Italian M1950 pattern. So, if you've seen anything about World War II and uh, German use of camouflage, you would say, hey, that looks familiar. And you'd be correct, because it's patterned after the famous Italian M1929 Telemimetico, or San Marco, as a lot of people call it, pattern. This is an updated pattern and was introduced around 1950, so that's why I call it the M1950. I don't know the exact name of it. Um, and was used until the early 1990s, so pretty pretty long time. So they made shelter halves, an infantry oversuit, I don't know if it was a two-piece or a one-piece, a helmet cover, and a specialized paratrooper uniform. And that is what I believe this is, it's a paratrooper jacket, and that's why, or from my little bit of research that I've done, and I'll show you why in a little bit. And it's a three-color pattern consisting of a reddish-brown and ochre shapes on, or not of an, but of reddish-brown and ochre shapes on an olive-green background. So let's go take a closer look. So as we get a little bit closer, you can see that the edges are actually not sharp. They're blended or kind of faded together, which is a really good thing to have in a camouflage pattern. Also, I love simple patterns. This is a three color, like I mentioned, as you can see too. And it's kind of a larger one. The, the M1929 camo pattern was actually a little bit bigger shapes. And then this is a more condensed version of it, basically. But the same, the same kind of uh, idea and uh, this overall design, I guess. So this jacket, even though the, the series really isn't about the identification of uniform models and all that stuff, the reason I said it's a paratrooper jacket is because it's got really padded, like a really thickly padded reinforced elbow on either on either sleeve. And it's got these pockets. And I think, I'm pretty sure I saw more than one source that said that this was an Italian paratrooper jacket. Um, not this particular one. But uh, and then I saw a picture of an Italian paratrooper, which is hard to find a picture of. And they were wearing something that looked exactly like this, so... If you're from Italy and you know about this stuff, let me know if I'm right or wrong. I'd be curious to know, but I'm pretty sure I'm spot on. All right, there's no tags on this per se, but they do have a stamping for the size and whatever. We'll take a look at that, and then we'll wrap the video up. So this is located on the neck portion, the back of the neck. So you see, I think, the name of the place that made it with a lot number or serial number. Three, I don't know if that's like a size three, and then 98, 169, and 166. I know 169 and 166 are measurements for size. 98 would be like a medium though, and this does fit me, even though I'm pretty sure these are made to be worn over knee, or over, over knee, good God, over a uniform, so it might be oversized on purpose, but it does fit me, and I wear about a 2X, so that's pretty interesting. All right, we'll wrap the video up now. Italy is one of those countries that seems to have been forgotten about militarily since the end of World War II. I'm really glad to have this example to go with the rest of my Italian collection. That's pretty underappreciated. It's a cool pattern. Um, I believe this would work well in the fall or the spring up here in the northwest woods of Wisconsin. But I think it's too brown for summertime, too brown and khaki for summertime up here. I know Italy's got a little bit different kind of uh, vegetation and climate than, you know, obviously the northern United States, central northern United States. But, yeah, I mean, I respect the pattern. It's, it's pretty, pretty cool. So, overall, it's, a, it's really hard to find in the U.S. as, as a jacket like this. Uh, they had, I think they had coveralls, which might have been that infantry suit they were talking about a few years ago for sale but i haven't seen this stuff on the market in a long time and it's really expensive if you can find it so yeah and it did have a really impressive service life it's a 35 to 40 years or whatever and it's pretty recognizable even people that don't know a lot about um other camouflage besides world war ii german stuff will recognize this and be like hey it looks like it's, it's italian at least so now you know what model it is and whatnot and a little bit more about it hopefully so thank you for watching, everyone. If you want to support my work financially and want more cool educational content like this, the link to my Patreon is in the description, or you can also become a channel member by hitting the Join button below. Your support helps me be able to make a wider variety of content that I wouldn't be able to do simply funding out of pocket. So also, five bucks a month or more on either no, method of support gets you access to my Discord server, which is a lot of fun, I think. I've learned a lot on there, believe it or not, from the uh, Patreon supporters. And we have a lot of good discussions, a lot of information is exchanged, and it does get really fun at times, too. We have some little shenanigan nights once in a while. So, anyway, if you can't support the channel financially, I totally get it. It's not a problem. Just make sure you like this video, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. Thank you for watching, everybody, and we'll see you on the next episode of Camouflage of the World.